Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see everybody today. So many smiling faces on this uh, rainy morning. Thank you all so much for coming out to learn about our state of the schools. Um, we're glad each of you could make it, of course. But if you know of a friend, a colleague, a family member, or acquaintance who wanted to come today but couldn't make it, know that we are video <coughs> and we will put this up on our YouTube channel for anyone to see at their convenience. And we'll be sending that link out to everyone. So just please help spread the word about that. Um, as a token of our appreciation, we hope that you received a 2019 calendar. Um, if you didn't, those are circulating out in front, I believe. This was made by the students and staff of West Oxford Elementary School. And for those of you who don't know, West Oxford is now a school of choice with a global focus, which suits the increasingly diverse population of students and families very well at that school. So uh, we're really proud of Ms. Hunt and her faculty and the work they're doing there and thank them for putting this together. <coughs> you also probably received uh, several other documents and if you did, make sure you get one on the way out. First is a copy of our 2019 annual report, hot off the press, okay? This is a great document just to have a quick reference for basic facts and points of pride about our school district. Um, we also have copies of our new strategic plan, which is this booklet here. And we also have copies of our district alternate report card, which highlights our emphasis on student academic growth. So we urge you to, to browse through these, share them with your your uh, friends and, and colleagues, and we have additional copies available if anybody would like some more. Also, there are some flyers uh, with information about our upcoming Showcase of Schools, which is this Saturday. And uh, we hope everyone comes out for that. It's designed for parents, uh, students, and community members to come out and learn about all the wonderful choice programs we have at all of our schools. And that will be held at Granville Central High School this Saturday from 9 to 1. Uh, finally, we have some photos about our upcoming winter job fair. And this is a local recruiting effort, and we are accepting applications for all positions. If you know anyone that would like to drive a bus, uh, or you know, become a classified employee, or is interested in becoming a teacher, please spread the word. All right. So we'd like to begin today by introducing a gentleman who has dedicated his entire professional life to the education and betterment of children. Many of those years right here in Granville County. We're very fortunate to have his expertise and genuine passion for public education. Please join me in welcoming the chairman of our Board of Education, Dr. Tom Poulihan. Good morning and welcome on behalf of the Board of Education. We are thrilled with the turnout today uh, and could not be more pleased. I know last year the crowd was not quite as big as this, and so everything continues to grow. There are so many people I'd love to, to recognize, and I think that in the next section there will be uh, people who will be recognized, but to have so many elected officials out today is, uh, I'm not sure that there is this many elected officials in one room at the same time in the history of Granville County. <laughs> so we do appreciate uh, locally and uh, our state representatives, representatives and so forth. Um, I want to, be, but I do want to recognize a group of elected officials who are critical to our school system, and that is our Board of Education. And I would like each one of them to stand and share your name and what district you represent, if you would. Begin with Mr. Rob Rivers, and then you'll each introduce yourself. Thank you, Dr. Coolahan. Uh, <coughs> Dr. Rivers from District 3. Ed Mims, District 5. Letter P. Senior, District 4. David Richardson, District 7. Danny Muni, District 6. These gentlemen and, and a couple of others have done so much. To, to help our school system. Remember, being a board member is a voluntary position. 
Uh, we don't make the big money that some other ones do. But uh, seriously, uh, we give our time, we do it voluntarily, and assure you that there are not always great times. And sometimes we ask, hey, what are we doing this for? But we wouldn't want to do anything else because, because we love our schools so much. I'd like to take a couple of minutes and talk about our speaker today, our superintendent. When uh, we hired Dr. McLean, uh, after we interviewed her, literally all of us agreed that she was the one to be elected to serve as our school superintendent. Uh, when, we inter when we interviewed her, we talked about three things that we wanted to see her focus on. The first was student achievement. We wanted to raise dramatically what was going on in our school system. The second was public relations, which she's done a great job of. And third was the ability to do something about mold in our schools. Well, I guess it's not a funny topic, but it is a lab. And so uh, she's, she has far exceeded uh, our expectations, and we could not be more pleased. And we're delighted about the report she'll be given today. Many of you do not know that when she came on board, literally faced mold the first day of the job, and what she has done to lead us through some very rocky times, up and down, as we see across, across the country when it comes to our schools. We could not be more pleased, and for someone who's not having a, a lot of experience with mold and some other things, she's done a wonderful job. So, we thank you for, for all that you've done, and we look forward to your report, and now I believe I turn it over to Dr. Meyer. Is that correct? Okay. Thank you for being here. Very much. Good morning. I am Michael Meyer, Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum and Instruction. At this time, it is my distinct honor to recognize some important guests that we have with us today. Dr. Houlihan has already recognized the members of the Board of Education. <coughs> Excuse me. At this time, I would like to go ahead and recognize Mr. Mike Phelps, the people stand, our county manager. Xavier Wortham from the Oxford Housing Authority. Harry Mills, Economic Development. <coughs> and Angela Allen, Travel and Tourism. Next, I would like to ask all elected officials to please stand. And if you would, please give us your name and who you represent. Uh, Larry Yarbrough, I'm the state representative for Granville and Carson Counties. The lovely Jay Chandler, Graham County but Board of Commissioners. Tim Carey, District 6 County Commissioner. David Smith, Gamble County Commissioner, District 2, Vice Chair. <coughs> Archie Wilkins, Commissioner, City of Greenwalker. <coughs> Mike Woodard, North Carolina State Senator for District 22, Granville, Person, and Durham Counties. Cherry Garrison, State Representative for District 32, and includes uh, Granville, Vance, and Warren Counties. Yancey Washington, Granville County, Clerk of Superior Court. Nina Nowell, Commissioner, City of Greenwalker. Del Mims, Commissioner, City of Greenwalker. Jackie Sargent, Mayor for the City of Oxford. Terry Turner, Mayor of Button. Tony Kozar, County Commissioner, District 4. Ron Bullock, Oxford City Commissioner. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. <laughs> if we have any members of law enforcement with us this morning, we ask that you please stand at this time. Will members of the faith-based community please stand and be recognized? <coughs> Thank you. <laughs> if you are active, duty, military, or veteran, please stand. <laughs> Thank you for your service. Now I would like to recognize our, our, our <coughs> standing principals there in the back. Please stand to be recognized. <laughs> Last but certainly not least, I want to recognize Reverend Dr. A.C. Robinson and Mrs. Jocelyn Robinson 
Dr. McLean's Love Your Parents. Will you please say that? <laughs> Reverend Frankie McLean and Amari McLean, Dr. McLean's husband and daughter. Please say that. Again, I would like to thank each of you for joining us this morning. Mrs. Beth Day, Assistant Superintendent of Finance, will share this morning's purpose. Thank you, Dr. Byron. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Beth Day, Assistant Superintendent of Finance for Granville County Public Schools and a lifelong resident of Granville County and proud alumna of Granville County Public Schools. We are so glad to have you here this morning for our State of the Schools Address. The purpose of this address is to provide a bird's eye view of our district. This morning, you will hear highlights for our district regarding academics, the finances, and operations. You will receive the most up-to-date information we have in each of these areas and some of our ideas for the future. This administration believes strongly in transparency, and keeping our stakeholders informed. Community and communication is an important part of our strategic plan. We hope that you will learn some information about our school district and use it to help us with both retention of our students and employees. We need the help of everyone in this room to be ambassadors for our school district and carry our message through your words and deeds. We thank you so much for taking the time this morning to spend with us and being a part of bringing our mantra of excellence and achievement for all to life. It is now my honor and privilege to introduce someone who has dedicated her heart and soul to running Granville County Public Schools, our esteemed superintendent, Dr. Elisa Robinson McClain. because they allow us to take this district where we feel it should go. And to my family, I thank everyone for coordinating their schedules to be with us, to learn a little more about our district this morning, so that we could fulfill what Beth just described, which was to all sing from the same hymnal. I've had the privilege in my 18 months of hearing a lot of things about our school system. And I thought, well, why not just take a minute to all hear where we are, where we've been, and where we would like to go. That's where the 2.0 comes in. You've all heard of the state of the union or state of the schools. That sort of, here's where we are. So we're going to do a little of that. But the 2.0 is to sort of plant seeds with each of you about how you can help us propel this district to higher heights. Is that all right? I never outgrew being a teacher, so can you get all thumbs up? <laughs> I like that. I like that. We will begin this morning by reminding everyone that we fully intend on making Granville County Public Schools a world-class district. The children are here from all over the world. The question is, are we prepared to take them to the next level? This is the team that helps me each and every day. They're on the front lines for our school district. You've already met them. Our principals, and you see they've already given us thumbs up. They're ready to rock and roll, and they are doing some amazing things in our schools. In fact, one of the beautiful things about Granville County Public Schools is that each school is distinctly different. Every one of our schools has their own personality. So for individuals out there who sort of talk about the district collectively, who say, uh, Granville County is not for me, send them to our showcase of schools this Saturday they will get the opportunity to see just how different all of our schools are. And I venture to think there is a good fit for everyone in our community. We are also open to individuals visiting and joining the ranks of our school district who do not reside in our district. Our Board of Education passed a policy last year that now allows individuals to pay tuition for their students to come to schools in our county. So anyone you know 
who might be interested in getting a top-notch quality education, please ask them to take a look at a district that is on the move. This team, my team, I'll be very honest, I could not do this work without these three individuals. They are incredibly wonderful, most supportive, and extremely knowledgeable about every aspect of this district. And that's all the superintendent really could ask. I've worked in about seven different districts, and the individuals at this level have to carry the capacity to step in at any time. And I will say to you, if anything ever happened to me, this district would be just <coughs> with any of those three. They are just that talented, and I consider myself fortunate to have them. Some of you have been in sessions with us before, especially at Convocation, and our symbol is what? Aww. It's the star. And the star has five points on it. Each one of the points on the star represent a concept or something that means a great deal to us. High expectations and high standards for students. High quality instruction. Caring service with a smile. Quality communication. When you visit a five-star hotel or eat at a five-star restaurant, the experience is just a little different, isn't it? Well, that's what we want people to say about our district. That this district, something about it, is just a little different. So we're all wearing our stars in support of our motto, which is committed to excellence and achievement for all. Now, look at your neighbor and say, committed to excellence committed and achievement for all. For all. Now, this didn't say for some. We don't want to achieve at high levels for some. We intentionally capitalize the word all. So say it one more time for me. Committed to excellence and achievement for all. We almost got it right. <laughs> <laughs> but you get what I'm saying. <coughs> A few statistics about our county. We have 20 schools in total. And you can see the breakdown. We have one new school this year, our Granville Academy. And I'll speak about that in just a moment. It is a blended model of learning. What we realize is that our district, in order to compete, and in order to remain contemporary and competitive with other districts, other states, and other programs, is we have to get outside of our comfort zone and do things a little different. Our Granville Academy does just that. I've got uh, Vanessa Wren, mm -hmm. Vanessa with me. Vanessa is the principal of that school. She's also our IT director. And what we do is now offer students the opportunity to get on their computer at home, to fulfill their curricular obligations, and then come visit with us in the classroom for two to three days. So that's why we call it a blended model. Thank you, darling. My lips are sticking. <laughs> That's what daughters are for. <laughs> That's your mama <laughs> So we'll talk a little more about that with Dr. Wren in just a few minutes. <coughs> Demographically, take a look at our district. This might surprise a few of you. I've heard the rumor mill about who attends Bramble County Public Schools? <coughs> well, here are the numbers. Here's the hard facts. How many of you are a little surprised at what you see? Yeah, just a little bit. I'd like for you to pay attention to the demographic uh, category to the right, which is 61% of our students are economically disadvantaged. You might ask Dr. McLean, how did you come up with that number? That's based on our number of free and reduced lunch applications. So when you talk about universal breakfast, universal lunch, poverty, food for children being a necessity, you can see that over half of our students in this county are unique in some way. Nearly 10% are gifted and 16% receive exceptional children's services. Take a look at our human resources department. <clears throat> I've heard all kinds of numbers about HR in our district. These are the real numbers. I'll tell you what will stand out just a little bit to some of you. Many years ago, we had teacher assistants in nearly every elementary classroom. Do you remember that day? I have how many elementary schools? Nine. nine. We just saw nine. 
I have how many teacher assistants to help teachers in every one of those schools? That 103 was nearly tripled about 10 years ago. The state of North Carolina made two major cuts within the last, I'll say eight to 10 years. And there were cuts to central office and cuts to the teacher assistants. Can you imagine being in a classroom with all those babies and not another set of hands or eyes? So that is one of the pieces that stands out a bit to me. <coughs> um, we have four social workers now as the result of some grants that were written last year. So we're really excited. I see Pauletta Thompson, wave your hand, just step in and wave. She's our grant writer for the district. She did a phenomenal job, and we're appreciative for her expertise. This number made me very happy when I saw it. We have 52 <coughs> National Board Certified Educators in our district. I think you all ought to applaud them. <laughs> That's a big deal. That's a big deal. We also have 170 employees, educators, with master's degrees and higher. We ought to applaud that. <laughs> On the right, you will find that we, this past year, had a 16% turnover. And that rate is lower than four of our five neighboring counties. If you look to the mountain portion of our state, that rate is significantly lower. There's very little turnover in that portion of our state. If you head over to the East Coast a bit, it's astronomical. But for our region, that 16 can be better, but that's a pretty decent number. We want to make it lower, if at all possible. Right now, we have a 10% supplement, and I'm hearing the buzz out there from other superintendents about the way to get, to attract, and to keep teachers is to pay them well. Now, we did a little something for new teachers but we didn't, as a state, do very much for our veteran teachers. So we're all competing for that same pool. I'll give you an example of just how difficult it's becoming. When Amari graduated this past May from NC State University, our family was sitting up there and we saw rows and rows of individuals from the School of Engineering, rows and rows from the School of Communication, rows and rows from veterinary, you get where I'm going. They announced, now it's time for the School of Education. I had one row and a half. And we're all competing in the state of North Carolina <coughs> for, for an audience that looks like that in most of our universities. So we, we want to, one, encourage our young people <coughs> to go into the field of education. You're going to see a little later in this jobs that are coming about. Well, guys, I'll tell you, teaching isn't going anywhere. But if we don't get people certified and licensed to do it, it will be difficult for us to carry on the manner in which we are. So I thought this human resource piece was important. I'm very proud to share with you this sort of at a glance look of our strategic plan. Many of you helped us craft and design this document. We worked all of last year as a district hosting kitchen table conversations. There were about four of them. Do you remember those? We went around and we asked three questions. What should we start? What was the other? What should we stop? stop? And what should we continue? And we developed our strategic plan around those three questions. And here is what has come out of those three questions. We have a focus on academic success. We have a focus on the health and safety of our students, our adults, and our buildings. We have a focus on human capital management, fiscal responsibility, communication, and community. And this morning's collective work falls under community and communication. It would do our district no good to have all of this information and never share it. We want our community to know what is going on in our school system. In fact, it's the only way we can get better. The motto is here. Once again, that is part of our strategic plan. What is the motto? It's just the teacher and me. What is our motto? Excellence. We have straight A's in here this morning. I thank you for that. But our vision is also here, and we subscribe to this vision very, very carefully. Every student will reach his or her full potential prepared to what? Thrive. thrive. Now, I don't know about you, but if you Google the word thrive, which is what the committee did, they tried to find the right word here. We want students to thrive. When they come to our district, we want them to thrive so that when they leave, they're successful, not just in the world the way it is today, but they're successful in, what are those last two words? A changing world. 
We need our students to be able to think critically, to be able to internalize and develop. So what should I do now? That means they've got to be under instruction like that on a daily basis. Our mission is how we live every day in our schools. We empower every student every day, short and sweet. The committee said we don't need anything grand and long because one, we won't remember it. Two, we want to be able to truly live by it. So our mission, and I'm asking you as our ambassadors to join us, our mission in Granville County Public Schools is that we want to empower every student, not some of the students, every student. How often? Every day. Every day. None of this is possible if our students are not safe. So safety is our top priority in Granville County Public Schools. We created last year a district-wide safety task force. If you serve on that task force, will you please stand at this time? <coughs> Thank you so much. Let's give you a round of applause. <laughs> Our district safety task force assists me with issues around safety in our district. And you'll see some data in just a moment about lighting, exterior lighting and signage and front desk operations, things of that nature. This task force tackles those issues, sends me messages, makes recommendations, or when hurricanes come, like they have this year, or we have the inclement weather, this, this group sort of grapples with issues. Doug Logan um, with emergency management sends his regrets this morning, but everyone on that safety task force is committed to the work of keeping students safe while at school. Now, as a result of their work, you'll see some crazy letters up here. N-M-B-A-U. Does anyone know what that means? Well, I will tell you this. My one board member who rolled off actually came up with it, so he's not here to tell you. So I guess I have to tell you what N-M-B-A-U means. No more business as usual. When it comes to safety, it's no more business as usual. I was a walker as a child. My elementary school was right down the street, J.C. Sawyer Elementary. And back then, Mama could give us our breakfast, bundle us up, and trust us to walk down the street to J.C. Sawyer because she knew along the way there was Aunt Alice, there was Miss Lee, there was Miss, you get where I'm going? And they would watch the children get to school safely. On rainy days, mom could come in, or if it was our birthday, and she could bring cupcakes. And we could sit and we could trust there was nothing in those cupcakes. <laughs> you get where I'm going? Yeah. We can't trust all of that now. The world is just a little bit different. So we have to operate different when we have people's most precious gifts. And I consider the children their most precious gifts. So no more business as usual. We have zero tolerance for bullying. We don't believe in propping doors open anymore. Why would I make it that easy for folk who mean us no good to just walk right on in? So no more prop doors. No leaving campus in high school and coming back, because I don't know what you're coming back with. So if you leave, have a great day. <laughs> but you don't get to come back, because I don't have, I don't want metal detectors and all of that at our doors if we can help it. We're not there yet. We don't want that. We want our schools to be safe. We also have to be careful. We want to be sensitive. So this was one we balanced a little bit. We want parents to be able to walk their children to class at the beginning of the school year. But after the first two weeks, we sort of have a kiss and go spot. And you can see, I can see Amari going down the hall, have it way. You want to come back? But when you don't know who's entering your building, and we don't have staff just to check everyone in the morning, we had to find a mechanism for being super safe and careful. We take all threats seriously. We take all threats seriously. I had a parent ask, you knew he was just playing. No, I didn't. And I'm sure the other parents didn't think he was playing either when their child started texting home saying, Ma, guess what happened? Guess what he said? So now we have to use resources to investigate whether you were just playing. I'm glad to hear you were just playing but we don't play like that. We take everything seriously. You'll probably see some signage like this in our buildings. If you see something, say something. 
This applies to everyone, not just the students. You all watch social media. If you see something on Facebook that could potentially bring harm or someone is <coughs> in danger, say something. You'll also see a safety tip line. This is how serious we are about bullying. Each school has a different number. This is just the one from Butner Stem Elementary. But every school has this. We don't need your name. We just need to know what's going on. Does that make sense? We want people safe. We have school resource officers as the result of some grants that were written. We've increased from five to nine officers in our building. They also serve on our safety task force. And emergency plans, emergency plans, emergency plans. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So this is an area where I hope we're wasting our time. I hope we don't need to activate these plans. But just in case we do, we need to make certain everyone understands what to do. These are the fine men and women who help us take care of our schools every day. You see, they're smiling. Isn't it nice to see Sheriff smiling? <laughs> we love it. It does take a special SRO to work in the school environment. And I can say these individuals do a fine job. Now, ladies and gentlemen, here are some of the security upgrades that have taken place over the last year. We have installed buzzer and camera entry systems in most of our schools. <coughs> Still working, I believe, with one more. With one more, if I'm not mistaken. Security cameras are all under contracts. So we're going to get those in all of our schools. Several are in. We've improved the signage across our district, and so, so far, thus far, we have put in about a mile and a half of perimeter fencing around our schools, around our playgrounds, and around the areas where we don't want children to be able to easily walk off into the woods, and we don't want intruders to easily walk onto our property. Exterior lighting has also been updated. We, last year, on a Saturday morning, trained all of our educators from the administrative level um, to the security, I'm sorry, to the secretaries uh, at the front day's desk out at Granville Central in what was called an active shooter live action training. Principles, was that not something else? <coughs> we went through a real simulation of what it would sound like if we had an active shooter on our campus what it would feel like, what do you do in the event of, and those sorts of things. It was a very powerful exercise. What I'll add is this year, we're going to do more of a first responder training in the event something happens. I believe that is in April, April sometime, with all of our administrators, nurses, front desk staff. All right, let's turn our attention to curriculum and instruction on this journey and student services. State of our schools. We keep the main thing, the main thing. In all of our doing, we keep it about the students. You will never have an extraordinary learning system if we focus on other things or get distracted by other things. So while all of those things work at the back, in the backdrop, our key is to stay, stay focused on these little faces right here. Our instructional areas of focus are rigor, student engagement, monitoring, and quality feedback. Even as adults, if you work in a very rigorous, challenging environment, it's probably very enjoyable. If you are engaged in doing the work, it's probably enjoyable. And if you get feedback on how you did, you will probably come back tomorrow because you know what the deal is. Same thing with our students. We focused on professional development regarding rigor last year, and this year student engagement is the key for our district. This is our instructional thing framework. You'll find it sort of posted like the poster at the front of this room in every one of our schools. We want a sense of urgency and a sense of excellence in orchestrating the manner in which we educate our students. You will find at the center of that star reads excellent, not just good, but excellent <coughs> outcomes for students. And at the very bottom, you see some of the ways in which that is done. Here are our district expectations. Upon arriving last year, we've not changed them. Not at all. These are our goals, and they're hardy. They're hardy and they're hefty goals, but I believe if you fall a little short, you'll still be among the stars. These are our goals. If you remember nothing else, I'd like for you to remember our ID. Our ID is very simple, two I's, two D's. We want to increase our achievement and graduation rates in this district, and we want to decrease suspension 
and dropout rates. We can't teach children if they aren't in school. We understand mistakes will happen. And Mr. Calvin Timberlake, raise your hand. Phoenix Academy will help us with that. I will all place them there. We will continue their education. We don't want to take education from students. That is something I heard. If you get in trouble in Granville County, you just throw them away. That is not true. We don't throw anyone away. Now, they may not like where they have to go, but that's their choice. I have a place for you, and we will work with you. And we have several community agencies that work with us in our Phoenix Academy. Our overall instructional goals this year have been please reach for double digit increases in every way. This is what we've asked of our principals. The beautiful thing about it is this was the goal last year and we did this in pockets across the district. In fact, we had 20, if I'm not mistaken, Beth is our testing and accountability person, Creek Moore Elementary had it in two or three places. Double digit increases, not one or two, double digit increases. That means you take students where they are. Now while the proficiency may not be high, grow those babies. Grow them. Take them where they are and grow them. So we want it in growth, we want it in proficiency, and we want it in overall performance over time. Now, let me show you something. Don't tell anyone, this is just a secret. It's between us. Take a look at this. Take a look at this. We have all of our schools listed here. Now I heard how terrible we were as a school system. I'll tell you something, I would not have applied to come here if I didn't see the great potential in this district. This district is doing quite well. How many schools reached not met last year? How many? How many? Only three. Only three were not met. You see the ones I'm talking about? One school, take a look at Tar River. Tar River's performance composite was 68, which is more than half of where some of the other schools were. But they were not met because they have a different challenge. It's difficult to keep growing children who are already proficient. Their challenge is a little bit different than two of my other schools. And my other two schools are not met because unless you exceed growth with the D, you will be not met. So they are working to exceed. They're working to exceed so they can get out of that, that category. Take a look at this. Now this is something I want you to tweet out. I want you to write about it on Facebook. I want you to take notes. I want you to see this. This is critically important. We have 18 areas as a district we can look at to determine how we're doing academically. These are all 18. We either met or exceeded growth in how many areas? 17. 17. 17 of the 18 areas in our district either met or exceeded growth. I think that's a great question. this morning and my principals please stand with this group this is the core of our work ladies and gentlemen these are the, these are the individuals who make it happen but i want to tell you a little something about this does not meet in eighth grade math let me tell you a little something about that this was the first year in the state of north carolina that students in eighth grade who took math one did not have to take math one and eighth grade math. Historically, they've had to take both. They were eighth graders, so they had to take uh, math eight. But they were smart, they were enjoying school, they liked math, and they were ready in eighth grade to take math one. Historically, they had to take state assessments in both of those areas. This is the first year the youngsters in math one only took the assessment for math one. Does that make sense? So my students who were not ready for math one took the traditional math eight. And that means I got none of those scores that I've traditionally gotten 
from my high flyers in math. So do you think we saw this one coming? Oh, yes. We projected that. So you know what? I'll take that. I'll take that any day because I don't have a double digit decline. <laughs> we know what we need to do and we know who the students are. But in absolutely every area in our district, we met or exceeded growth. Now, you know, I've just got to act like we're in church for a minute. Look at your neighbor and say, they met or exceeded growth. <laughs> now, that's what I want you to keep saying. This is the data. Here's the data. And we're going to continue our work there now. <laughs> the class of 2018 last year, this, this is some data you can see that they're doing, they're doing phenomenal things. You see the numbers for those who went to two or four-year universities, and you see those who are ready um, to go to post-grad work, post-work after graduation. But I think this is even more important. The students who went to two and four-year colleges and universities earned $8.6 million. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that's worth the cost. High school leaders did a phenomenal job finding money. So if students in this community want to go to school, they can. They can. We will help them. We want them to. And as you can see, they matriculated all over the place. U.S. Naval Academy. They can go to Duke. They went to all of these places. In HBCU, you see several. This is just a few. But we thought it would give you an idea of where our students went last year. Very, very proud of them. There is an assessment our students take in 11th grade. It's mandated by the state of North Carolina. It is their ACT, um, and then they take an ACT Work Keys assessment, which is different from that. ACT Work Keys is for our <coughs> completers. Those are students who've taken two years and they've completed a CTE pathway. As you entered this morning, you walked by some of our CTE displays from our programs all over the county. We have many. CTE programs and opportunities for our students. Emily Sue and Tamara Rodenbaugh, will you two stand up? These two ladies work with Dr. Meyer on our CTE, CTE programming all over our county, and they do a phenomenal job. As you can see last year, for the first time, we had 22 students get platinum level status on this work keys assessment that adults take in order to get those jobs. High school students. We are proud of that. CTE is absolutely wonderful. And I'd like for you to just take a look.
Our Board of Education allowed us to explore this last year, and we serve over 400 students at four school sites, an elementary and middle school <coughs> in the northern part of the county, an elementary and middle school in the southern part of the county. Year-round school begins in July, nine weeks on, about two and a half, three weeks off. <coughs> we also have Wolfpack Works. This is an initiative for our beginning teachers. We're in partnership with NC State. They help us with training our beginning teachers. And of course, we've mentioned some of the grants. We've received one over $1.2 million in grants, and you'll see what those grants are. We've talked a little about our showcase of schools this Saturday, but I'd like to also throw out, we have our winter graduation this Friday night. We understand in this district, not all students are gonna finish and cross that line the same time. So we offer a winter graduation, and we invite you to come out with us this upcoming Friday night, 6 p.m., I believe, 6 p.m., to see our winter graduates. Now to our support services. People ask, where can I get help? <coughs> we have a support services team in our district, and we partner with over nine mental health partnerships. We work with the SAFE organization. We also work with the Juvenile Crime Prevention Council and the Judicial Attendance Council. So we have partnerships with all of these organizations and we're pleased and we want to keep those supports in place. Regarding technology, we want our district to be designed for our digital natives. We are not digital natives. We weren't born into using all of the devices you see children use. We keep my niece on the weekends. She's five, we've never told her how to turn the cell phone on, we've never told her how to use an iPad. We've never told her what to do with the computer. But my goodness, she does it all. <laughs> she is a digital native. That's why we call them digital natives. If we cannot keep the attention of digital natives, we're doomed. So we have a little learning curve there because we have to meet children where they are. So that is what our technology team has striven to, striven to do. And this is a few, a little uh, information I'd like to share with you about this technology team. We have a lot of technology. Thanks to our IT team in the district, Dr. Ritt and her staff work closely with our principals. Every sixth through 12th grader in our school system is assigned a Chromebook. They're able to take their device home, use it. Every teacher in our district has a MacBook, computer, projector, speakers. We try to make sure they have what they need. Our classrooms are outfit with smart boards, document cameras, and so much more. We have mobile learning, wireless classrooms that can occur anywhere, anytime. And we continue to write grants. I'm excited about the grants from our technology department because as of right now, we have 92 educators in Granville County Public Schools who have reached and attained Google Level 1 and Level 2 certification. That's a big deal for a district our size. And I'd like to thank Dr. Wren and her team. The blended learning model for Granville Academy. If you'd like more information, please come on Saturday. The students who are in that program absolutely love it. It works for them. What I'd like to share with you is this model, this school allowed us to draw back 59 new students to Granville County Public Schools from home schools, medical facilities, charter schools, and from outside of the county. I tell people, you never know where people are coming from. We had a student, was a race car driver, if I'm not mistaken, he had competitions all over the place. Blended learning works for him. It worked for him. We have a student who's in a family with a traveling circus. They acquired land here by death, and these youngsters still have to go with mom and dad. They come back, blended learning works for them. We needed to be able to meet people where they work, and that's what this school does. It's very innovative. We have virtual capacity with our teachers and students regarding instruction. Now, in the financial area, I'm pleased to announce we've had a clean audit. We did last year. We did this year. We, as a board, our Board of Education Independent Auditor stressed the need to reduce the reliance on fund balance. And that was sort of the root of some of the discussion that has occurred the last 10 months in our county. What I'd like to explain without giving a financial lesson is that there are different pots of money that come into the district, but there are restrictions on each of these pots. These pots can't be blended. I'll have people say, 
well, instead of building something or instead of paying for that, why don't you just get more teachers? Because they're all in different pots. Those worlds can't meet. So this is just an example of some of those pots. Here are the sources of our funding. I thought this might be interesting to you. Capital funds, local, state, federal. And then these are the, the this is the way we used the funds last school year. We had a total budget, 91.9 million, and the bulk of our funds are used on, what is that blue area? Shoes to take care of Our board historically in trying to fill gaps has they cut people, the human resource side. But you typically cut programs and initiatives when you do that. So this year, our budget highlighted a few other areas. Here it is, targeted assistance to our low performing schools. We focused on getting a psychologist, social worker, added to that, Phoenix Academy staff and such. The total recent actions of our board, however, in trying to make sure we did not have that deficit of $955,000 $770, which has been talked about over the last 10 months, uh, saved us. They created a savings of $778,000. Earlier action this year for JF Webb Health and Life Sciences, which will not go into play until 2021, will add an additional $40,000 to that hole of $955,770. Some of you might ask, why the challenge? Why the challenge? Reliance on fund balance comes <coughs> when you spend, just like at home, more than you bring in. It's that simple. There's no magic to it. It's that simple. The problem is, like at home, unless that savings account keeps growing, you just can't keep going there. <coughs> My mom used to say to me, now make sure you keep a little bit aside, you know, just in case emergencies arise. <laughs> That's what she said. School districts, most businesses, most homes have to do that. This challenge gets a little more deep when you have decreasing enrollment. <coughs> because for every student who comes to our district, the state allows us to draw down funds. So when students leave, the funds do what? They leave. Another piece of the challenge is when you have state mandated costs. When states give bonuses, when the state says we need to do this, we honor it. But sometimes that money has to come from local. And you don't always have it, but it makes that hole kind of like a hole that just keeps growing. And then finally, when the state says there are certain budget cuts, it impacts what we do locally if we try to keep people employed. And the hole gets even larger. So there are many variables. Let's just take a moment to look at the student enrollment over time. If you go back to the year 12 and 13, you can see how many students we had in the district. The red are Granville County Public School students, and the green represents students who are in charter schools. You can see how over time funding has been decreased because of the number of students in red decreasing over time. We thought this fact would be interesting to share this morning. You can go back to uh, 12, 13, and look at how much money went to charter schools in comparison to this past year, the 18, 19 school year. Um, we are right now have an increase, a local transfer of 2.2 million over where we once were. 2.2 million dollars. So when people ask me, Dr. McLean, what are you gonna do? I want the children. I want the children back. I want them in this school system because I believe we are the best thing in town. I believe in our teachers. I believe in our principals. I believe in our board. I think we are the very best educational opportunity in town. And I need you to help me spread that word. I want the children back. I think they deserve us. Budget process is uh, a process that consists of a lot of people. We don't go at this alone. Again, transparency is key. So we invite all of these stakeholders to the table. We want to hear from them. What do we need? What should our priorities be? So if you're tapped on the shoulder and asked to serve, please step in and serve. Regarding operations and auxiliary, 
we thought some of this would be interesting to you. We run a massive bus transit operation to get our babies to school. <coughs> we are extremely pleased. We have, however, only 6.5 full-time mechanics and one fuel truck driver to take care of all of Granville County. So we need just a little bit of help. What I'm proud of on this slide is that this year we received a 31.6 from the state safety inspection. And this is the best score we can find. Last year we were in the 50s, 52 if I'm not mistaken. When I arrived, we were in the 70s. And this is one of those scores where you want to be lower. You want to be lower. We are so proud. The regional average was 37.8 and we were 31.6. So hats off to our bus drivers, our bus mechanics, our bus director. We are so pleased with what they are doing. We're also pleased that in our district, our parents have access to an app on their phone called Here Comes the Bus. If they want to know how close the bus is so that they don't have to put their children out in the rain, they can just follow our buses right on that app on their phone. We got that activated last year, and it is a wonderful tool. If you get a little worried, if parents get a little worried, that bus hasn't come yet, just look at the app, and it can show them exactly where their child's bus is. What it won't show is if there was a little bit of trouble at school and the school has been trying to call the parents. That's not what the app will show. It will show if that youngster gets on the bus and where the bus is. Dr. Wingborn talked about this. What I'll say is our district is no different than others. I ride all over the state <coughs> and I see signs for bus drivers. Please, if you know of anyone who'd be good, let, let, let us know and let them know to reach out to us. Let's talk for a moment about child nutrition. Child nutrition is a separate enterprise. It's its own business, if that makes sense. 61% of our students are on free and reduced lunch, and we have a wonderful summer feeding program. Across the district, all summer long, we gave free lunches. This is a part of a federal grant our cafeteria, child nutrition program earned, and so we began to couple it with the book bus. So wherever the book bus would go, the students could also get food. Summer is a time we worry about. But we have to reduce our plastic and styrofoam. So you'll see in some of our school systems, the silver coming back and the trays coming back. This is just a chart of how we've looked over time with free and reduced lunch. You can see it continues to increase in our community. Well, this is Miss Day and I having Thanksgiving lunch <laughs> at one of our schools. It's really yummy, it's delicious. Regarding our maintenance department, we have 18 campuses and over 600 acres of land and 1.5 million square feet of climate controlled space. And we have nine individuals, one director and one secretary taking care of all of that. So we have a little bit of help, but I think they do a fantastic job with what they have. They've already completed over 6,000 work orders this year. We are pleased to be partners with our county commissioners. And our county commissioners last year provided for us access to $15 million for, what does it say? What is it for? HVAC. HVAC and roofing. I got stopped at Food Line. You know, a lot happens in Food Line. I got stopped at Food Line and that lady wanted to know why we couldn't do this or why we couldn't get two more teachers or the commissioners gave you 15 million that money is earmarked for HVAC and roofing. I'm very very proud to share that regarding mold and the health of our buildings every building is on an annual routine check. We check often, we check frequently and if anything is discovered we then bring in the troops and double check and clean if need be. We want our buildings to be healthy buildings. We all sort of saw this upon arriving uh, last year. But we don't run for things, nor do we pass blame. We own it and we move right on and take care of it. And that is what our board did. We thought this would be very interesting for some of you to see. When I arrived, this is what we saw in some of our buildings. This is what we saw. But look at where we are today. <coughs> <laughs> Take a look at this one. This is what we saw. And this is where we are today. So a great 
deal of work has already occurred and we aren't done and we are going to need to continue this work. We're going to do a great deal more this summer. We can't do some of this when children are in school. So there's a lot of weekend or break or summertime work with regard to cleanliness and air quality in our buildings. We're really proud of this brand new HVAC system in one of our schools. We found that the majority of our schools had systems dated back to when the schools themselves were built. Well, that's just not acceptable. And we must put energy, continue to put energy in that area. As far as recruiting goes, we're recruiting all over the place. We want the best and the brightest educators in our district. And here's some teacher mentors. We mentor our young teachers who we thought would be very nice to say good morning to you. And now it's time for On the Move 2.0. If we're going to remain on the move as, this, as a district that is going to be world class, we have to look at the research for where the jobs will be, not for today, but for the next 10 to 20 years. And that's what we do in this district. That's why you will hear us continue to talk about STEM and adding the arts to it for STEAM, because we want well-rounded children. But if you look at this picture, what comes to mind? What comes to mind? Now, I'll tell my age a little bit. I grew up watching the Jetsons. Do you all remember the Jetsons? I grew up hearing Fred say something about 1999, and we all shivered. We never thought we were going to see it. We thought the world was going to crash. Do you remember the Jetsons, how the mama could just walk in the kitchen and then walk right out the whole meal? We're sort of living the Jetsons. So take this to the 10th power. Because this is how our children will need to earn a living. Here's what some of the research said. It's impossible to say what the future will hold. But I pretty much guarantee you this, it won't look like it does today. Look at some of these jobs. This is why core academic information, being able to think critically, being able to produce, being able to ultimately decipher, our skills students need. We don't know where they are going to be. <coughs> Look at some of these jobs. Have you heard of them? Do you know what they do? I don't. I don't, but I know we have to figure it out to make sure we're prepared for our children. In looking ahead, <coughs> we want to make certain we take a look at some of these initiatives to prepare our babies. We know it's difficult to have class sizes that are large. And as a result of House Bill 90, which was a wonderful bill last year, K-3 is taken care of and really protected from large numbers. But that meant class size in grades four through 12 are enormous. We'd like to take a stab at bringing those class sizes down. That will help with the quality of instruction. We have early college, but we'd like to look at middle college where students attend high school with everyone for grades 9 and 10, <coughs> and then they go to the community college campus for middle school and earn their certifications and licenses for grades 11 and 12. International Baccalaureate. How many of you are familiar with the International Baccalaureate program? Thank you. I was fortunate as a parent. Our daughter went through the IB program at Hillside when she was in, in high school, and when she got to college, it had her so prepared for college but I really think the rigor associated with this program, and IB is to begin. You should have a stream of elementary IB, middle, and high. It had her so prepared that I was pleased. When I built Cedar Ridge High School in Orange County, this is the one program people from Chapel Hill would pay to come to our school for. IB is that rigorous. So if we're going to compete, we have to find things that will help people ensure the success of their children. This is one of those programs. I'd love to have a dual language program in this county. Why do we need dual language? What is said about languages 10 years from now? You better be able to speak two, or you might be in a little bit of trouble. That's what research says. So why would we wait in the school system? Our kindergarten, first, second, third graders need to be exposed to dual language right now. It's happening all over the state. We want our children ready too. PBL, project-based learning, that's with kids doing things with their hands. You saw that in the CTE <coughs> video. Coding, 
Think back to that picture you just saw. You didn't really see people doing a lot of things. What did you see doing the do? Things. Someone has to code and program all of that. So we've got to ratchet up our coding <coughs> electives. We'd love to have calendar flexibility. We'd love to start school earlier. I love that our senators are here. <laughs> I do. We'd love to have better pay for our teachers because we feel they earn every brown penny of it. We'd love to have a secondary director in our district right now. We have an elementary director, but my secondary principals need that same type of support, and we need some instructional specialists who can help our teachers with what it is there to do in the classroom. But we also need some assistance with some behavior modifications, don't we? Wouldn't that be nice? Amen. <laughs> Children aren't going to be perfect, but when they mess up, I need us to be restorative. We need to help restore them and not throw them away. So restorative justice solutions. These are just a few of the ideas for where we're going. <coughs> we want to continue our collaboration with our county. We, we just have so enjoyed the work we've done together. I personally appreciate it and look forward to what is to come. Our liaison committees work together beautifully. We've got incredible faith-based faith, faith, faith partners, and we have a strategic plan we're all going to abide by. This is what the end of the road looks like, and this is what we want for every single one of our students. And the privilege of taking this with our seniors who graduated last school year. Each school got to send seniors to me, and they were so excited. And we asked them, what can we do better? And they told us. So some of the things I just shared from you came from our recent graduates. They know. They know. They know what it took to get in school. And they know what students want. They know where they're going. This team is ready. I promise you, we're going to give it the best <coughs> we've got. Our partners are ready. And we're so grateful for each and every one of these partners who continue to step up for Granville County Public Schools and our entire district is ready. When you see hashtag on the move, and I hope you tweet something out from this morning, hashtag OTM, that simply means we're on the move. <coughs> and thank you for allowing me to serve as your superintendent. It's been a joy, but let's stay on the move. Have a great day.